In this Learning Electrics video, we will look at 110 volt plugs and sockets and how we should wire them. We'll also look at the yellow 110 volt transformers that are common on most work sites across the UK and beyond. Just how does site safety work with 110 volts? We are asked lots of questions about 110 volts and some of the many questions are shown here. Why do we use 110 volts? Why is it safer than 230 volts? How do I wire up a yellow plug correctly? And many more. In this introductory video, we are looking at the BSEN 60309-2 110 volt range of equipment. These industrial plugs and sockets are tough and durable, designed for hard work conditions. If we look at the front view of a yellow plug, we will see three brass pins, one large pin and two smaller pins. If we position the plug so that the large pin is at the bottom, we see that we also have a locating lug positioned at the four o'clock position. This will match up with the yellow socket and ensures that, under normal circumstances, only yellow plugs can locate into yellow sockets. Plugs and sockets will come with information labels attached or printed onto the casings. In the red circle here, we can see the letters 4H. The 4H tells us this means 4 hours or 4 o'clock. When looking at the plug, with the big brass pin at the bottom, the lug should be at the 4 o'clock position as shown. This label will also tell us that this is a 16 amp plug. It's designed for 110 volts AC use and is for two phase plus earth supplies. Look at the plug and socket together as outside views. What you will see when they are assembled. The earth is the obvious bigger brass pin. The blue wire will always be 180 degrees opposite the lug. So it's on the left as we view the plug in this drawing. The brown will be on the remaining pin on the right in this view. What of the socket? The earth is the bigger of the holes and notice that the locating recess for the lug is now on the opposite side and the blue is still opposite the locating recess but now on the right. The hinged lid will always be opposite the lug or recess and always closest to the blue connection. The brown wire will be on the left with a socket. Many electricians know that with a BS1363 3-pin domestic socket, the brown or line terminal is always on the right as you look at it on the wall. But now, with the BSEN60309 yellow socket, picture the earth at the bottom, and the brown is on the left. And whereas the earth is at the top for a BS1363 domestic socket, it's at the bottom for a yellow 110 volt socket. Easy to look at with a socket on a flying lead. But with wall mounted sockets, you'll have to tilt your head. With practice, it soon becomes fixed in memory and is useful for when testing for voltages. The same with the plugs. With the BS1363 3 pin plug top, the brown is on the left as you look at the pins of a closed plug. And on the right, with the BSEN60309 yellow plug, if the earth is at the bottom. Going back to the yellow plugs, remember that when the plug is opened and then looked at from the cable side, everything is the opposite way round. And this is where the conductors should go in a correctly wired plug. The green and yellow CPC or circuit protective conductor goes into the terminal marked E or with an earth symbol and the brown into L plus on the left. The blue conductor goes into the only empty terminal on the right. Now for the socket. And when the casing is opened, the terminals will be as shown. Brown will now be on the right with blue on the left. Conductor connections will be green and yellow into earth and brown into L plus on the right. Then finally blue into the empty terminal on the left. Although I'm using the popular brown, blue, green and yellow wiring, there are numerous methods used to identify conductors and terminals and here is a small selection. Old colours and wrongly wired plugs can cause confusion so always check. We should not use the naming convention of line and neutral since there is no neutral in this system. For ease of understanding I always call the brown conductor L plus and this is often marked at the terminal. Then the blue wire but the terminal is frequently unmarked 
so I always call it L- minus, as shown on the photo. And lastly, the green and yellow into the marked earth terminal. Other marking conventions, as shown in the table, might include colour-coded terminals where they are coloured brass, silver or green. And there can be many old wiring colours on older plugs and sockets. We can move on now to what happens inside the transformer, the big yellow box. How does the wiring of the transformer keep us safe if something goes wrong on site? This drawing shows the two electrical windings inside the transformer and their associated wiring. And also the laminations, the metallic core that acts as the electromagnetic transfer material. It is the metal laminations that make the transformer heavy. We have a line and neutral on the input side, the left, but we do not have a neutral on the output side, the right. Instead, we have two phases, which we have called here line plus and line minus. Notice that the earth on the secondary side is connected to the centre of the windings, what we call centre tapped earth. Electricity does not pass directly from one side to the other. It is done electromagnetically. The primary or input winding is on the left and this has a line and neutral at 230 volts plus the earth. The alternating current on the left or input side causes a magnetic disturbance in the metal laminations that make up the quite heavy metal core. This magnetic disturbance in the metal laminations causes an electrical disturbance in the secondary or output windings. And as this is a step-down transformer, 230 volts input gives us 110 volts output to energise the power tools. Put very simply, the electrical input is changed into magnetism and then the magnetism is changed back into an electrical output. As you would expect, there are a lot of energy losses in this type of system, which is why the transformer becomes quite warm in use. So we have a single phase input and a two phase output. With reference to the earth point at the centre of the windings, each of these phases is 55 volts and they are always electrically opposite each other. This is shown more clearly here. Whilst one phase is at plus 55 volts, the other is at minus 55 volts and together they give us 110 volts output for the drills, saws or whatever. We call this a 55-0-55 volt system. 55 volts with reference to the earth, but 55 plus 55 or 110 volts for the tools. 55 volts AC is still in the low voltage range. It is not extra low voltage, but it is very close to the 50 volt limit and so we call this reduced low voltage. An electric shock at 55 volts is unlikely to prove fatal to a healthy adult that is clothed and booted. The 110 volt centre tapped earth system will achieve safety because a single fault electric shock will be between either L plus and earth or L minus and earth, but not both at the same time as that would be a double fault and we only expect one wire to work loose or be damaged at a time. Just to make that clear, let's suppose that our colleague has his feet on the ground or on something earthy like scaffolding which is touching the earth. At the same time he touches the loose L plus wire. He would only get a 55 volt electric shock between L plus and zero volts. His hand is in contact with L plus at 55 volts and the feet are in contact with earth at zero volts. The 110 volt system is a two phase system plus earth that uses a centre tapped earth transformer or CTE to create a 55 55 AC supply. Between the two phases is 110 volts and this is used for 110 volt power tools on site. But between either phase and earth there is only 55 volts AC. This is called reduced low voltage and is close enough to extra low voltage that most healthy adults will survive an electric shock from it. This has been a simple introduction to 110 volt systems on construction sites and I hope it's been useful and informative. Thank you for watching, it really is appreciated and we hope that you found this video useful. Please subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our videos and remember to click on notify to be sure of not missing our next video. And you will find even more information, videos and help 
on our website at learnelectrics.com. And don't forget, you can always type in Learn Electrics, all one word, into the YouTube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer. We are constantly adding new videos to our channel. Don't miss the next one. And once again, thank you for watching, and we hope to see you again very soon.